When Dad asked if I wanted to go hunting, I thought he meant for deer. I wish I was right. Dad packed his hunter starter pack. Two Snickers bars, a gallon of water, a half gallon of milk, two protein bars, and a handful of Slim Jims. He was dressed in camouflage with his yellow sunglasses, the ones he had bought off of the TV. I didn't have the kind of gear he had, so I settled on hand-me-downs from Pat. A camo t-shirt, hiking boots, and tan khakis. In a moment of muscle memory, I texted him to make sure it was okay to wear this stuff. It took me halfway through the message to remember he wasn't going to respond. I put my phone in my pocket and followed Dad out the door. We got in his pickup truck and drove towards our destination. I didn't know where the hunting grounds were, but Dad said they weren't far. Outside, the sun was crawling into the sky, turning the black into shades of purple and red. I didn't know why we had to leave so early. Dad never explained it, and I never asked. We just need to get one thing clear today, right? Dad chewed on tobacco as he talked. What is it? I asked. When we have the shot, we can't hesitate, he said. Yeah, sure, I said. Dad took Pat hunting every year, and all I heard was how good of a shot Pat was. Personally, I preferred video games and horror movies to sitting in the mud and killing woodland creatures. Mum and I would prepare the post-hunting feast of ribeyes and baked potatoes, which at least earned me some brownie points from Dad. When we hit the highway, Dad took the exit south toward Pittsburgh, which I thought was odd. I didn't know much about hunting, but I knew there were a lot more deer in the Allegheny Mountains than there were by the stadiums. Do we need to get supplies or something? I asked. Dad picked up an old sheets cup and spat into it. Nope. We ended up in Squirrel Hill, just northeast of downtown, which had big colonial houses and a boutique movie theatre. Mum took me there once to see Booksmart, because it wasn't playing at the Cineplex in our town. We ate Bunch of Crunch and popcorn, our shoulders bumping as we laughed. Dad never went to neighbourhoods like this though. He hated yuppies. After a few more minutes of driving, we pulled into a hiking trail parking lot. Ahead of us, I could see a neighbourhood through the trees. The trail ran along their backyards. We were the only car in the lot. Dad didn't say anything as he went to the back and grabbed his rifle. I stayed in the truck, waiting for my orders. When it was time to hunt, Dad knocked on my window. I opened the door and followed him onto the trail. I bet you like how quiet the house has gotten, Dad said. I was walking behind him, carefully dodging the sticks he snapped with his boots. Do I like that the house is quiet? I asked. You're an indoor kid, he responded, and the house was loud with everyone in it. I love your mum but she had opinions almost as big as mine. Pat and I mostly agreed, but he was starting to get a mind of his own. Dad laughed as he spit more tobacco into the mud. Ahead of us, the neighbourhood was getting closer. I don't like the quiet, I said. Dad nodded as he slipped a bullet into the rifle. I was surprised how close the neighbourhood was to the hunting grounds. When I imagined hunting, I pictured dudes in a treehouse on the side of a mountain. No people in sight. Wouldn't people here be scared by the gunshot? I like quiet when I choose the quiet, Dad said. We didn't choose our quiet, did we? I didn't say anything. Instead, I chewed on the inside of my cheek. After a few bites, I could taste blood. 
I have to live in a quiet house because of another man's decision. Dad went on. Do you know how many times I was drunk in a bar and had thought of just driving home? I'm not a rich man. I couldn't afford a $20 cab every time I want a buzz. But I called one every time. I knew there were mums and kids out on those roads, and I didn't want their blood on my hands. Dad stopped walking. Is that 411? He asked, pointing to a house. I studied it. In the distance, I could see the mailbox. 411 was written in block letters on the side. I think so, I said. The house was something out of a James Bond movie. Massive windows, a back deck that wrapped around the first floor, Greek statues. There was a pool and a waterfall in the backyard. Although it was still early in the morning, there was a kid and a mum out by the water. The boy, probably about preschool age, had a remote in his hand. There was a small boat circling in the water. Dad took a knee and lifted the scope out of his bag. He slid it on the rifle. Have you learned about STDs? Dad was whispering now. He looked through the scope and adjusted it. It took him three times to get it right. His hand was shaking. STDs? I asked. Diseases with crazy names, getting passed from person to person. Dad said. You have a fun night with a girl and wake up with a fist-sized lip? You know about those, right? I nodded. I looked back at the woman and kid. She was kneeling down next to him, rubbing his shoulder. She had this big smile on her face. Like this kid operating the boat was the greatest thing to ever exist. She reminded me of mum. You know, about that? Dad asked. He was lying on his belly in the mud now. The rifle was pointed to the house with the waterfall pool. Now about what? I asked. How diseases can transmit between people. He was getting frustrated. Sure, yeah. Why? Pain is like an STD, he said. People give it to each other. If you have a lot of pain in your life, you need to be responsible. Transferring pain to someone is never innocent. Sweat broke out on my forehead. I didn't like the way Dad was talking. It was the same way he talked when he got the news about Mum and Pat. Where are the hunting grounds? I asked. Dad cocked his rifle. The man who owns that house gave us a lot of pain, he said. I looked back through the trees. The pieces were coming together. No, Dad, I said. We need to go home. Did you know that he left the hospital after two hours? What? Mum and Pat are sitting dead in a car and he's skipping home to his family, Dad said. He only had a couple of bruises. Dad pressed his eye against the scope. We need to redistribute our pain, he said. I never went against my dad. He and I didn't have the best relationship, but there was a silent understanding between us. Stay out of my way, and I'll stay out of yours. But there was nothing to be understood here. Dad took a long, slow breath. As he exhaled, I dropped down and shoved the rifle's barrel into the dirt. Hey! He barked, pushing me back. Let's go home, I said. We don't have a home, he said. Dad turned on his side and kicked me. His foot landed hard into my stomach, sending me back into the mud. Please don't do this, I said. I tried moving closer again, but it hurt too much. When I breathed, I could feel the sharp edge of my rib puncturing something. It took short, wispy inhales, like a wounded animal. Dad didn't look at me. He kept his focus on the woman and child. This is for you, baby doll, 
he whispered. The sound of his rifle echoed through the forest. I closed my eyes and buried my face in the mud. As the ripples of the blast softened, I heard a splash. I lifted my head out of the grass, blade by blade. The remote control boat was still doing circles. The woman was looking into the pool, her eyes as wide as dinner plates. She stood quiet for a moment. When she finally screamed, her eyes didn't change. The only thing that moved was her mouth. It dropped open like a nutcracker's. The sound she made was raw and cavernous. As the boat slowed to a stop, the water under it turned purple, then brown, then red. Dad took his face away from the scope and cried. It wasn't the way he cried at Mum and Pat's funeral. Those were back straight, tough guy cries. These were different. He wept like a kid who didn't get the right toy for Christmas. Then, as if hypnotised, Dad stood up, wiped the dirt off his overalls, then walked back towards the car. I watched him walk down the path, his posture caved in. I wanted to run up and grab him, tackle him, punch in those stupid eyes. But I couldn't. When I tried to move, my body didn't respond. The woman's cries echoed closer to me, as if I was the god she was begging to. I wanted to vomit. I didn't know if Dad's pain went away. But mine began to.